Audi's Q5 Sportback offers strong competition to more established, trendy, mid-sized, premium-badged coupe-style SUVs like BMW's X4 and the Mercedes GLC Coupe. As with those cars, there aren't too many practical compromises in creation of this model's more stylish look, and clever OLED rear lighting tech offers an extra showroom incentive. If you're looking for a premium badged mid-sized SUV, you don't choose the coupe SUV variant of it to get a more sporting quality of drive. Or if you do, you're likely to be disappointed. Adding what amounts to a backwards baseball cap look to a sensible crossover class car of this kind, usually accompanied by a bit of extra weight, obviously isn't going to make any difference to the way the thing drives, whatever the glossy advertising might suggest. So it is with this Audi Q5 Sportback. The end confection here further softened by the standard SUV model's remit as a car primarily designed for a lowering rather than a raising of the heartbeat. The rather lifeless steering certainly goes with that, something that Audi should improve in future by working with its partner VW Group brand Porsche, who in the past have borrowed quite a few Q5 mechanicals for their rival Macan model. That not as many of the oily bits are shared between the two cars now is down to the fact that its current updated form, this Mark II Type 80A Q5 design, gets an extra dose of electrification under the bonnet, where unlike the Macan, this Audi can still provide the option of diesel power, a drive format that remains defiantly favoured by customers in the upper mid-sized premium segment. Many Q5 Sportback customers will opt for it in 40 TDI diesel guise, in which form you get a recently introduced 2-litre TDI unit that offers 204 PS and features twin dosing tech for greater cleanliness that's also aided by the adoption of a 12-volt mild hybrid system. This has kept the efficiency figures competitive with base sport trip. Manages up to 44.8 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 165 grams per kilometre of CO2. The alternative mainstream 2-litre four-cylinder variant, the petrol-powered 45 TFSI Sportback model we're trying here with 265 PS, which features the same 7-speed S-Tronic auto gearbox, also uses the 12-volt MHEV system. But a more sophisticated 48-volt mild hybrid setup features with the V6 TDI diesel engine sporting SQ5 Sportback variant, a version offering a gutsy 341 PS. A much greater degree of electrification is of course delivered by the two plug-in hybrid Q5 derivatives, the 50 TFSIE with 299 PS and the 55 TFSIE with 367 PS, which can run on battery power for up to 38 miles after around two hours of replenishment from a seven kilowatt charger. These PHEVs are based around Audi's two-litre petrol turbo engine, mated to a 105 kilowatt electric motor powered by a 14.4 kilowatt hour battery and use the same tarmac orientated Quattro Ultra predictive on-demand four-wheel drive system as the other mainstream models. According to Audi, form often carries as much weight as function for its customers. Well, the form here is certainly more expressive. The Q5 in this sportback form aiming to offer what the brand hopes is a best of both worlds experience. Coupe style and SUV practicality all in one classy package. This coupe SUV model is certainly sleeker than the standard version. The drag factor drops to 0 0.30 CD, but it's also 20 kilograms heavier, partly because it's seven millimeters longer. The obvious change, of course, is the earlier downward slope of the rear roof line, emphasized by these silver finished roof rails. More silver trimming along these lower sills add a further touch of SUV-ness. Time for a look inside. Let's take a seat up front. Getting into the front seat is predictably easy thanks to the raised ride height you get in this kind of SUV and the door thunks shut with vault-like quality, leaving you in a cabin which, as always in a Q5, is a masterclass in interior quality and ergonomics. Despite recent advances made by direct rivals, in many ways this remains the defining interior in its segment with the cool, 
classy feel that's distinctive to this Ingolstadt brand. As part of the changes made to the facelifted version of this second generation Q5, Audi introduced this much larger 10.1 inch Revo centre dash infotainment screen with its more sophisticated graphics, acoustic touch functionality and natural language voice control. Navigation and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring is of course standard as is a full portfolio of Audi Connect media connectivity. You're positioned almost faultlessly on supportive heated leather seats in front of the best digital dash in the segment. The 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit screen fitted as standard throughout the range. Wherever you look, touch or feel there are treats. Buttons click nicely, column stalks feel good and the low rent plastics you'd find further down in most premium rivals are noticeable by their absence. Now it's time to turn our attention to the rear. There might be a few issues with headroom if you've gone for the Ritzius Vorsprung version with its panoramic glass roof, but otherwise, unless you're over six foot tall, you'll be fine for ceiling space. As with the standard SUV version of this model, the experience you can expect back here depends quite a lot on whether you've got a version of this car fitted with this sliding rear bench seat plus back seat. This lets you slide the base back and forth by 12 centimetres to increase either legroom or luggage space and also alter the backrest angle through three stages for greater long distance comfort. Let's take a look at the boot. Accessed via a standard powered tailgate, the rising height of which can be tailored to suit your garage ceiling. A 510 litre space is on offer with this body style, 40 litres less than you'd get with the ordinary SUV body style. If you need more cargo flexibility, then the first option is to make use of the way that this rear bench splits 40-20-40, which means that longer items like skis can be pushed through into the cabin without disturbing two rear seated occupants. Completely flattening the rear bench frees up 1,480 litres of space in this sportback version of this car. That's 40 litres less than the standard SUV model. It's surprising that Audi gave BMW and Mercedes the mid-size coupe SUV market to themselves for so long. But this Q5 Sportback corrects that oversight with characteristic Ingolstadt thoroughness. If the sales profile of the smaller Q3 Sportback is replicated, it'll likely be the preferred Q5 body shape in future for most customers. Overall, it's ultimately hard to escape the conclusion that this more appealing looking Q5 simply does a better job of the whole business of ticking every really important need you want to meet when buying a premium upper mid-sized SUV with a real dose of segment style. There's a want one factor here which should stand this car in very good stead.